Okay, YouTube. I'm gonna go over the process of me, uh, the process I'm using anyway, to insulate the bottom of a cargo trailer. I reckon an RV or a camper would pretty much be all the same thing. But what I'm doing is the first layer I'm pitting up is a two inch layer. But before I pit the two inch layer, layer up, I use this Gorilla. And like I said, it's just how I'm doing it. This uh, Gorilla Heavy Duty Ultimate Construction Adhesive. I'm going right against the subfloor, in between the subfloor and the frame. And I'm running a bead all the way around the perimeter. And I'm just pretty much doing that for a vapor barrier, maybe. And then, after I get that in there, I'll take this Loctite PL300 foam board construction adhesive. And I put it on the bottom of the board and just like do an S back and forth from end to end, back and forth. And uh, I put that on the bottom of the foam board. And I take that foam board and press up against the bottom of the subfloor. And then I use this uh, third hand system. I think these are called little hands. Let me see if I can get the focus on it. These are really awesome. They really help out a lot when you're working by yourself. But them are there is to just hold them up there until the construction adhesive sets up. And if you notice, all down through there, I got pieces of three quarter inch pieces of plywood in there and that's to just confirm that I have the spacing for my last layer of foam board because once this all sets up I'll come back with a one full sheet in the end no splits in it and I'll do the same thing with the the PL 300 is I'll just go back and forth snaking all on the back of that foam board from end to end I don't know maybe maybe making your snake about three inches from each other from end to end. And I'll put that second layer, just like I did here, one continuous solid piece. And then what I do is the screws right here, the stainless steel deck screws, 10 by three and a half inches long. And then I use these grip fast, plastic washers and here here's it set up that's the stainless steel screw going through the washer does these just happen to be the exact size you need to go through that two inch and that three quarter so I'd make it two and three quarter thick that screw you can go through both layers and get into the three quarter inch subfloor but without protruding through the other side. So that gives you the capability of screwing all that. And what I did is I my floor joists are on 24 inch centers. So I just put these screws on 12 inch centers. So I got three rows of screws on each cavity and they're 12 inches apart. And that come out to be 21. So each floor cavity, I'm using 21 screws and 21 washers. So you would probably need, I would suggest just buying a five pound box, but uh, five pound of these stainless steel screws and a couple boxes of these plastic washers. And uh, in the description, I'll leave a link for the screws and the uh, washers and just in case you're curious, I'll I'll leave a link for these uh, on Amazon. This uh, third hand system, these these jacks, they're kind of like uh, kind of like how your caulking gun set up. I mean, they don't hold a lot of weight, but boy, they're nice for holding stuff. They're kind of like the same way, the same way how a caulking gun works. But all right, that's my uh, that's the system how I'm doing it. No one's saying that's the uh, that's the only way it can be done. That's just the way I'm doing it, and uh, it's working out real good. 
like I said, each one of these cavities are using 21 screws and 21 washers. So a five pound box of them screws and a, and a couple boxes of these washers would be plenty enough to get you through there. And I end up using from Lowe's the, the green board, uh, the green guard board from Lowe's. Uh, it's gonna be uh, three, uh, four pieces of three quarter and four pieces of two inch thick. And uh, that'll get you on a six by 12, probably get you on a six by 14 also. Uh, yep.